be unto you, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. No man on half shall give glory unto himself, but will return all glory back unto you. Daddy, we say thank you for all you have done for us as a body. We thank you for NIS. We thank you for all the members. We thank you for fellows of these institutions. We appreciate you, Heavenly Father, for our ESCO, moving up and down, making sure that things work well. We thank you for all the meetings that we have had during the past one year, since we had the last AGM. That we accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. the blood of Jesus, pray the blood of the Lamb will be sufficient for us as we progress in this meeting. And this will be like a, a Nappinga meeting that will make the AGM to be a blessed success. Father, let this be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For all our people that are still traveling, for me, Father, grant unto them, save Johnny Masses in Jesus' name. Yeah. Pray and honor be unto your name. Yeah. For we have prayed in the mighty name. The next item on the agenda. Hello. Please, let's have one meeting. Hello? Please, let us have one meeting. You may sit as a group, or please, turn your chair to this side. The arrangement is made in such a way that when you want to have dinner, I mean lunch, you will turn your table, your chair back. Please, now, if you are turning your chair, the other side, turn it and face the podium. Thank you for being so. The next item on the agenda, on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Do you, does anybody have any amendment or addition to the agenda? Or any point you want us to discuss that is not on the agenda? All right, thank you. Uh, will somebody now move for the adoption of this agenda? I will guide us. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm saying. No, no, take a phone, take a microphone. My name is Victor Yamsi. In absence of any other addition or suppression, I say I move. That the agenda be adopted. Class of uh, 203. Thank you. 203. Okay. <clears throat> then we now have apologies. The apologies have been uh, submitted to the secretary. We don't accept. Apologies on the floor. So the secretary has compiled the list of Apollo and those who apologize for not attending this meeting. Am I correct? I am talking to you. Am I correct? Yeah, I'm correct sir. All right, thank you. <clears throat> the next item of the agenda is uh, the chairman's annual address. And that uh, task falls directly on me, and I'm going to do justice to it now. Amen. Thank you. 
chairman's address to the annual general meeting of the Board of Fellows, Nigerian of Surveyors, holding at the Chida International Hotel, Otako, Abuja, today, 19th of June, 2023. Protocols. The President, Nigerian Union of Surveyors, Past President, Nigerian Union of Surveyors, Past Chairman of Board of Fellows, President of Socon Council, Honorary Fellows of our Institute of the Board of Fellows, Deputy President, Nigerian Union of Surveyors. Executive Committee members of BOF, Chairman State Body of Fellows, Fellows of our great institution, Gentlemen of the Press. It is my pleasure and honor to welcome you to the annual general meeting EGM of our prestigious Board of Fellows. This meeting is epochal as it marks the beginning of the yearly AGM, where four reports will be given by officers of the executive committee with full financial statements and audit, audited account. Rather than waiting three years end of tenure, we are surely building on the foundation laid by our predecessors in office. The current administration of the BOF took up the mantle of office on July 25, 2022, when the current executive officers were elected into office. We want to thank you all for the confidence reposed in the executive committee and leadership and, and uh, its leadership and the support that we have received from the generality of fellows during the last 11 months. The thrust of our administration, as stated in my maiden address to this August body, is building, is building on the achievement of the past administrations to embark on the trans transformative agenda towards the enhancement of good governance, ethical behavior, transparency, and good go and uh, accountability in the running of the affairs of the DOF, and by extension, the institution, in order to achieve the aims and objectives of setting up the Board of Fellows. This report will give a brief state of affairs of, of this agenda and the task of administering the Board you have entrusted in us since the last 11 months activities of the executive committee. Dear colleagues, our transformational agenda is aimed at, among others, changing the way 
the board con conducts its affairs. We have raised and drawn the attention of the board to a number of issues which are the building blocks of our agenda. We are encouraged that the board has keyed into these issues, some of which are currently being implemented, while some are going to be focused upon in the ensuing year. These issues will be briefly presented and their level of achievement will also be highlighted. Meetings. The ESCO is the grand running, but not without some fitting problems caused by handing over glitches. Since the board has no desk officers, our office and vital documents and vital administrative documents are, are virtual and in multiple locations. This issue is honestly being addressed. The two mandatory board meetings were held in December 2022 and March 2023. Your ESCO met seven times, three physical and four virtual, to deliberate on pertinent issues and the trust of our administration. The deployment of ICT in conducting meetings ensured, ensured cost savings without sacrificing effectiveness in administration and in, in administering the board, the board. Members of your ESCO are appreciated for their hard work and sacrifices, though they were elected as ESCO members to give serveless service. Motivational speech. To usher in our administration's activities, a motivational speaker Mr. Abiodun Fijabi was invited to speak on the topic Board of Fellows and the challenges of leading a professional association into a desirable future. The speech, which was delivered during the December 8, 2022 board meeting in Abuja, was, I mean, in Abuja, resonated well with all the fellows present and was adjudged a welcome development. Efforts are being made to implement the salient points espoused in the speech. We plan to make such lectures an integral part of our meetings and topics such as old age and aging gracefully and graceful aging, capacity building, business diversification, and corporate professional practice are being considered. Elevation to uh, fellowship cadre of NIS. After a rigorous process, 16 members of the institution were elevated as fellows of the institution and were so inducted in May 2023. Expanded Finance and General Purpose Committee membership. Following a proposal contained in the chairman's meeting address, the Finance and General Purpose Committee was expanded at the board's meeting on December 8, 2022, to include at least two members elected on the floor to join three from ESCO. The idea was to moderate the financial dealings of the board 
the committee was, was immediately charged with the task of determining the allowances payable to ESCO and committee members, which subsequently, which was sub subsequently be approved by the board. Dear fellows, the committee had submitted its report, which was posted on the BOFE platform for comments as directed by the board. Unfortunately, only few comments which did not make any changes to the recommended rates were posted. Standardization of financial records, reports, and, account, and uh, accounting. We have worked assiduously to keep adequate records of finance and accounts of our activities to ensure that the board's accounts can be prepared and audited by the external auditors for presentation at every AGM of the board starting from this year, rather than waiting till the end of our tenure of our tenure. An accountant was hired to put the financial officers through the necessary process. Board investment. We engaged an independent firm of uh, stockbrokers, Apt Security, to investigate and confirm the status of BOF investment in shares in stock currently being managed by Bridge Securities Limited. And um, their report, which was submitted so far, pointed to the fact that we have accurate record of um, the stock for the board. Some of the stocks have picked up significantly in value in the last few weeks. We are keeping contact with the brokers and we have been advised to sell off our shares in UBA, UBA and Senate banks whose prices have moved up significantly and uh, advised us to re-enter when the shares drop in price. This will ensure that they will recover our investment and make substantial profit. Your ESCO decided not to completely divest the shares in the two banks, but to sell off 75% and risk the remaining 25%. Instructions have been given to the um, stockbrokers to this effect. And by the time um, of this meeting now, uh, a net of 50 million naira has been paid into the board's account from the sales. The treasurer will give more details on the board's investment in his report. Termination and Good Governance Committee. These committees have now been included in the reviewed bylaw which will be presented, which which will be considered our approval at this meeting. Full-fledged annual general meeting of the BOF. Starting from this BOF meeting, the board will be conducting a full AGM whereby each executive officer will give the annual report of the activities including audited accounts and budget presentation 
for discussion and approval. Review of bylaws. An expanded BOF committee, which included the past BOF secretaries and those who had participated and uh, contributed to the drafting of the BOF bylaw, was set up to holistically review the, by the, bylaws, the bylaws of the board. The reviewed bylaws, including the uh, changes we have proposed, we enable the board to continue to continually achieve the intrinsic purpose, purposes for which it was created. The changes will be presented for discussion and approval at this AGM. Professional development and related issues. The DOF is expected to provide, among others, leadership and generate ideas and strategies that will move the NIS forward and develop the profession in a sustainable manner, given the professional ex excellence of its members. Two of the new additional com standing committees of the BOF are geared towards addressing these issues. In the course of addressing this August, August body and the last two board meetings, we touched on a number of burning issues, such as one, the institution leadership failure and the role of the Board of Fellows. Two, development of uh, financial and uh, administrative guidelines for the Board and for the institution. Three, unruly, be unruly behavior at an event without consequences. Regional development and capacity building. Five, mapping policy, mapping policy, separation of survey content of engineering projects. Six, review of survey coordination act. Seven, formulation of the development plan for the institution. Eight, second, and the urgent need for the review of the Enabling Act. Nice. NIS of groups Transport. and the need for regulating them. Ten. Interact, interfacing with government at all levels and our agencies. It is hoped that NIS, SOCON, and OSGOV, and most importantly, the fellows of the institution will provide the leadership needed to start addressing the above areas of administrative decadence and professional development. Concluding remarks. Past presidents, distinguished fellows of our institution, we have presented to you our activities and achievements during the past 11 months of our administration. 11 months of assuming the mantle of uh, office. Our activities are geared towards building a better BOF and by extension, a better NIS, that is, enhancement of good governance, accountability, and transparency. We have laid the foundation 
for the implementation of the transformative agenda we set for the board. Fellows of our great institution, on behalf of the executive committee, I sincerely thank you all for the confidence reposed in us. Please be rest assured that the executive committee will work assiduously in the ensuing year towards the aims and objectives for which the board has been set up. My sincere appreciation, gratitude, go to the members of the ESCO whose hard work made a modest achievement possible. I salute their teamwork and resilience. Particular mention must be made of, of Savio Mohamed Nasir Umar, FNIS, a co-opted member of the executive committee, is Savio and an astute administrator who provided needed guidance on our assumption of office when we virtually had nothing to work with. He has continued to be an asset to the ESCO with his wealth of experience in the workings of the board. Finally, dear colleagues, dear fellows, the worth of fellows, the BOF, it's not in the size of our investment, investment portfolio, nor the value of our insurance. These, of course, are desirables. But our real worth is the content of our individual character. The leadership we provide at all levels and the good image of the profession we have to create. This is a challenge to all of us, and it is key to our transformative agenda. I thank you all for your attention. God bless the Board of Fellows. God bless Nigeria Institute of Surveyors. God bless our dear country, Nigeria, the sleeping giant. Thank you all. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you all for your attention, and uh, I'm uh, glad I didn't have to say hi. <laughs> oh, I finished. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, our next uh, item of the agenda, Mr. President of Nigeria, you know, surveyors, is he around? Well, Mr. Deputy President. Is it what? Well, um, I, I thought he was sent by the president, but he's attending another meeting, SOCOM meeting. I think SOCOM is more important than this. <clears throat> I didn't say that. Um, well, uh, by the time I finished, I was addressing you. A few past presidents came in. Uh, and I want to recognize you all. I can see from my right, that's Pastor Daigwe. Yes, you are welcome. Uh, the next year is uh, 
Vice President Akin Oyegola. Now welcome. Uh, Emeritus Professor, Professor F. Fajem Irokun, OON. You are welcome. And the Amudu are there, but they are there at the FNIS, TGNIS. You are welcome. And uh, Charles C.D. Charles. You are welcome. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, Alabo, CB, Charles, Charles. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you all. Um, Well, since we don't have the outgoing president here to give his URL address, we now go to officer's address, starting from a... Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> starting from the vice chairman, the officers will now give their report. And after that, we have the uh, external auditor's report. Can we have the mic at the microphone on the floor? No, I want to put that features. Chairman of board, uh, standing on existing protocol. This is the report of the vice chairman of the board presented to the board of fellows meeting on 19th of June at Chida International Hotel. I hereby present the report of the activities of the Vice Chairman for the period August 2022 when this executive came into office till date. The Vice Chairman statute really is to see to the organization of the induction of new fellows. However, for a more effective running of the board, the executive also assigned to the vice chairman 
a coordination of the activities of the other officers, chairman not inclusive. This letter assignment the vice chairman performed by reminding officers of actions required to be executed by them after our in school meetings. 2023 Fellows Investiture. The 2023 Fellows Investiture took place on the 11th of May. 2023, a total number of 16 fellows, 16 fellows elect, we are admitted into the board of fellows. For the effective organization of the investiture ceremony, the investiture planning committee from the for the effective organization of the investiture ceremony, investiture planning committee. Okay, okay, thank you. Corporate members of the local organizing committee from the FCT branch. The local organizing committee was more than useful to the success of the organization of the ceremony. The executive is very grateful to these two fellows of NIS, made up of Surveyor Ulutokun FNIS and Surveyor Damilola Ulukeogun FNIS. Up with <laughs> okay. the venues, two venues we are reserved for the investiture. This Alexis Hotel Jabi Abuja and WAC Event Center, Gadwa Estate Gate, Gadwa Estate, Abuja. The Alexis Hotel was the venue for welcoming the fellows elect, their guests, and other members.
another member say for uh, at a cocktail party was held at this venue. The event before the investiture, which so with about 250 persons in attendance. Small shops and light refreshment we are served at this event. The investiture proper was a full loaded program at WACP Event Center. The events, among others, which took place here included one guest lecture, guest lecturer's presentation, well researched paper, the role of surveyors and advantages of survey plan in land litigation was delivered by Barrister Prince Chibo Okul on behalf of Barrister Hyson N.C. Moalo. Two, cultural troupe entertainment very much enlivened the occasion. Three, the investiture proper involved the reading of the citation of each fellow elect, presentation of NIS fellow certificate, and presentation of souvenir to each inducted fellow. This event was ably carried out by the chairman of the board of fellows, Dr. Ola Atilola, EPNIS, FNIS, and the president of NIS, Dr. Kaunde, B. Uruamotemi, FNIS. For the refreshments, we had three course meal. Everybody in attendance was served on his or her table. The meals we are supported with soft drinks and table wine. Attendance. The executive made arrangements for about 400 persons for the event. Actually, it was uh, intended that more than 80% of our fellows would be in attendance. A random count showed that uh, just about 250 persons were in attendance. Finance. The financial involvement of the entire event will be presented uh, through the Secretary's report and the financial officers. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, the Vice Chairman of uh, the BOF. The report, uh, next officer to present this report is the Secretary General, I mean, BOF Secretary, Sovio Ola Shiambola. The Chairman, Past President, 
fellows, Secretariat report of the Board of Fellows. The current executive members were elected at the annual general meeting of the Board of Fellows from the general Senate of Sovio, held on 25th July 2020 at Adekiti, State. Those elected were Sovio Dr. Onishola Adela, FNIS, PPNIS Chairman, Sovio Lashinyabola FNIS Secretary, Sovio E. E. Esenaka, Vice Chairman, Sovio Emmanuel Ebove, Treasurer, Sovio Abiyadu Alonge, Financial Secretary, Sovio Olupumi Adesanya, Welfare Officer. Sovio Barista Bernard Omaiki, FNIS PPNIS, Administrator the Oath of Office on the newly elected officers. In line with the bylaw of the Board of Fellows, the Deputy President of your Dr. Matthew Olomola Bitoye, even has joined the Executive Committee as ex officio member. So the Mohamed Nasi Iman, FNIS, was also interrupted as a member. Meetings, Executive Committee. Within the last one year, eight Executive Committee meetings were held. Out of this eight, five were physical, while three were held virtually. Board meeting. Following the amended bylaw, two meetings were held, one in December 2020 and the other in March 2023. Attendance and contributions at the meetings were encouraged. Activities carried out. 3.1 Setting up of committees. Various committees were put in place to assist the executive committee in running of the board. Committees like Rights, Publication and Privileges, Finance and General Purpose Committee, and Committee on Addresses. Uh, presented their report to the House. Some of their recommendations are being implemented while House refer others to the Bylaw Review Committee. Additional three committees recommended to be created are Research and Development Committee, Nomination and Good Governance Committee. The newly recommended committees have been sent to the Bylaw Review Committee. 3.2 Nutritional Lecture. As part of the years of the current executive, motivational speakers will be invited to be at our meetings to deliver lectures on various aspects of life. At the meeting held on 8 December 2022, engineer Abiyotu Fijabit delivered a lecture titled Board of Fellows and Challenges of Leading in Professional Association. It was agreed that others will be invited in the future to deliver speeches on capacity building, old age experience, Diversification of business, corporate practice among surveyors. 3.3 by law review committee. The committee has been put in place to do the work. Thanks to Lagos Open or your state branches of the body of fellows for their input submitted. Also acknowledged were individual fellows who made submissions. The report of committee will be presented to the board for ratification. For 2023 Fellows Institute. At 8 December 2022, meeting of the board, 15 members of the board were elevated to the Institute of Fellowship of the institution. This was based on the report of the screening committee. The 60 member elevation was approved at the meeting held on 23rd, 2023. The total number of fellows now stand at 553. Four, 453, sorry. The first teacher ceremony took place on Thursday, 11th May 2023 at Abuja. Board of Fellows Secretariat. The board is grateful to the institution for allocating two rooms at the Secretariat to the board. The board is working on making the rooms functioning with the staff to be on ground to attend to the first needs. Board calendar 2023, 2022-2023. This was presented and approved at the meeting of the board held on 8 December 2022. Effort will continue to be made by the session as subgroups and other government related agencies to have a harmonized calendar of activities. This will prevent clash of days in the activities of all bodies concerned. So, any other business? The board was fully represented at the 18th Regional Conference of the Women in Survey held on 21st March 2023 at Abuja. 
executive success of your Abuba Kausma Jikamashi in his house at Abuja to wish him well. We appreciate the visit made and our prayer that we will recover very soon and quickly. Thank you. <laughs> I'm aware, I was been told now that uh, the president of our institution is uh, now in the hall. Can you please bring him up to the podium? All right, um, we now continue with um, now. The next <clears throat> the next report is by the financial secretary. Uh, however, the financial secretary is not available, is away, so the report will be presented by the treasurer, Emmanuel Ebon. Please um, occupy the podium. Thank you, my chairman. I want to get the judges of the house to stand on this established protocol. The financial secretary is not around. It's outside the country. I have asked him to present his report. The financial secretary's report. Let me start this report by first appreciating the board for finding me worthy to be elected of the financial secretary during the boss AGM on the 26th of July 2022 at Abiquiti. In a position which I humbly accepted, I also thank God for the gift of life for all members. <coughs> As a result of some lacuna complicated, they were completed in March. And the financial secretary was also introduced as the third secretary to the account in category C 
This report to cover the period from the 1st of July 2022 to 14th of May 2023. The opening balance in the boss account in Zeni Bank as at 1st of July 2022 was 17,523,968. The opening balance as that, as you can see it in the table in this uh, diagram, the, pre, uh, the presentation here. The opening balance is stated the total income for the year July 2022 to March. 72.11 cover. Our expenditure was 82 million three hundred fifty-one thousand. And see that is 65 cover minus 44 million six hundred fifty-two.
think they are being covered by the insurance while this was stopped in 2020. If you did not pay the 100,000, some paid 50, some paid 25, some paid 75, they were covered for a while, but since last year, that had stopped. So it was agreed in 2020 that all those who did not complete the payment should no longer be insured. Such members need to be educated and informed that they are no longer on the insurance list. Because you know, when this came to my notice, and on the list I saw the name of somebody in my branch, I called that member to let him know that he's no longer on the insurance. He wanted to know what to do to you so that it can now be insured. That, yes, that, that will have to be discussed in the ESCO and whatever conclusion or maybe on this floor. The ESCO decided in the last um, March meeting when we were presenting reports, it was discussed that those who are above 75 are not insurable. The premium for them will not be used to raise up a benevolence account. The benevolence account funds will be invested and grown to see if it will be possible to pay the family of those above 75 years, same as the family, because currently they are entitled to 250, but we are trying to see if there's a way that can be boosted up. It may not be up before the finance is grown, whatever it's decided, maybe it can be boosted up. Yes. We are working towards maybe paying the same for everyone. Thank you very much. Questions on the report that Hannah 
given either for clarification or such thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My second thing is that the president is supposed to address us. Yes. And as the president walking, I noticed that he's not properly dressed. And therefore, he cannot address us. The symbol of that line thing is not the symbol of the institution. Let me go further to say that those things, there are two of those things, and I bought both of them. One as Secretary General, 1980 to 1983, the other as President, 1990 to 1994. They are properties of the institution. So there's no way, and we all agree, here at the Board of Fellows and at the institution, that those things must be won by our president on public occasion. I noticed that the president told you that the board is on that line thing is not the symbol of the institution. Therefore, we cannot address this assembly as far as I am concerned. So when you give me permission to ask my own question for clarification of the report that I have received, I will do so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
in the house. The chairman uh, is temporarily out and has asked me to stand in. I'm happy the with all the past presidents, most of the past presidents are here and uh, they are sitting on one table. What I say is uh, they reach a consensus and tell us what to do. Thank you.
must know the circumstances under which one is placed because we know that these things, when we wear them, they are kept in the office. We don't carry them home because they are properties. When you finish either the secretary or you keep it in its custody. So we can't understand how it got missing. It has to be, it's not like a crown. It's a crown of a or whatever you call it. If you lose it, you report to the people who are the owners and the institutions personally. Then they will find out, if a will find out how it got lost. Because we don't want a situation where something has just gone. After five years, we can't get something somewhere. So the challenge is that to report, people will find out how it got lost. And if they are satisfied, they will order for it. It's not you who just for the city president to just sit down and say, oh, I've lost it. And we have which money to be used to pay for it. This is just money. So there are so many issues involved. It's not that someone say, oh, this one is like that. It's not that it's like that. So that's my contribution. So it's important for us to know the circumstances of the loss. It's going to be to replace it. And people must know. It's time to stand on uh, this um, When the past president mentioned that uh, the president was not properly dressed, I thought he wasn't wearing anything at all that uh, identifies me as a member of the institution. There is the insignia of office which is handed over uh, from president to president in perpetuity. I want to remember that the one the signal of office that I wore, that I wore um, was not the one that uh, uh, the gentleman who took over from uh, past president Boswani in the war, because past president Boswani in the modernized it. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because uh, as a, this is a meeting of board of fellows, uh, to me, it is, to me, it is an in-house meeting. It's not a public meeting, and if the president decides to attend by putting on even the brooch that shows that he's a fellow. I think he has met a requirement. He has met the requirement of the Board of Fellows. There are a few of us here probably that are not wearing our brooches. They are not properly dressed. I want to plead that the issue of whether something got missing, how it got missing, and what we can do about it. I want to plead that that should be stepped down for now. And that what we should have at the moment is to have the president of the Nigerian Institution of Soviets, who is here present and who is wearing a proper approach, not his presidential insignia of office, let him address us as uh, an outgoing president. I want to appeal to everyone to accept this uh, so that we can move on. Thank you.
Mr. Chairman, I am forced to get on to react to my past president's comment. You will recall, sir, that in Abeokuta, past president Bodiadiaga got to preside over the Board of Fellows meeting. And he was told that he was not properly dressed. And he had to go back home and dress as appropriate. He's here, he can contradict me. I have no problem if you can take a motion to allow whatever is going on to do. I have no problems with that. But things have to be done properly. That's number one. Number two, the approach, the symbol of office by past president that you wore, that was handed over by Chief Coker to S.G. Wokemba, to Tode Kase, and thereafter to you, and which you handed over to me. And during my presidency, I'm not going to bother you with the history. You can go to the history book. The history is there. I, on, I decided to honor a gold-plated uh, insignia of office. Complete. And the decision at that time, which is why I'm getting up, the decision at that time is that when the president goes anywhere, state visit, uh, whatever, Council meeting and this kind of meeting, he will wear that complete with the symbol. And the, the gold plated one, again completed with the symbol, will be worn on public occasion. That was the decision of the institution, not my decision. So I have no problem if the chairman, if the president is wearing the one or linen thing, but it has to be the proper symbol of the institution handed over from president to president. What is wearing there is not. That is the point I am making. And I like it put on record. I'm, I'm not interested in whether anything is lost or not. If it's lost, then let us know what happened to it. And by the way, there are two of them. So if one is lost, where is the other one? And past president there can, can bear me out that there are two because I saw him wear both of them when he was in office. Thank you very much. The chairman of the board. Aki, oh you want to The chairman of the board, the president, and I, deputy president, and school members, past president of the public institution, distinguished members. In the first place, uh, somebody has to tell me that what the president has on there. Is not what I handed over to my past president, uh, Alabo City Charles. Somebody will have to tell me that from where I am now. Because I thought that was what he had on. And uh, if that is what he has on, then this is not a public gathering. This is a meeting of surveyors at the highest level. So I, when I was the president, would go with that. And I had gone to other functions with him. The other one, which is the gold-plated one, is, yes, Jesus. And uh, presents us, well, when we have a public function, like we're going to have tomorrow anyone 
any other one like that. Having said that, I think uh, this is not the proper time. If we want to talk about the laws, if they are the one, this is not the time. This is Board of Fellows meeting. Where we get to the business session, we will talk about laws if there had been any. But I believe it is not out of place for the president to address us as he is. Thank you very much. No more questions on this, and I want to just... Chairman of God, our President, I'm always very enlightened when our elders turn out this situation. But my concern is that it must be complete. I agree that the past president was saying they ordered this chain and the joy. But that chain was retired when I took over office. Because having written the names of the past president, I noticed that there were no other spaces for incoming presidents to write down, especially my immediate past. And, um, and um, yes, and the one before him. So I placed order for another chain from the same to a clean and special bottle. That is so the other one was retired and it is now in a shell. Um, you know, a glass case in the president's office. I just wish to contribute to that. I'm not saying that during my tenure, I wore anything different from what he is wearing now for meeting. But I was wearing that jewel of office, plus that one is wearing. He has not told us something is lost. I think I'll be taken care of at the appropriate place. And for this meeting, I pray that we will allow him to do this presentation. Thank you very much. Um, these have been a few done between the uh, past presidents and a few people on the floor. I thank my vice chairman for holding forward and going down. Um, uh, the point has been made. There has been a plea that we, since it's a fair way address, that we waive whatever. <coughs> be the uh, shortcomings and allow the uh, president to uh, present the farewell address to us. And on that note, I want to leave that um, uh, we allow him to address us. I will take note of all that has been said. Thank you very much.
when I came here, I saw the number of fellows there. I wanted to go back. But the Holy Spirit took me on board. Thank you very much, um, my distinguished fellow, my vice president and president, and uh, distinguished fellows, past president and present. I want to thank you for uh, this, uh, this resolution of this uh, issue. And now it is question and answer. I want to have a few hands up, and the question will be asked. And at the end of everybody's question, we will now attempt to give answers to your questions. I think that's okay. Because it's an attempt, it's not an examination. Sense of what? Adopt? Adopt? That's really Okay. Adopt the report. Who wants to? Can you raise up your hand? I'm afraid to. You are afraid? <laughs> Okay, let me have a lady, please. I move a motion that this, this uh, all the reports be adopted. Thank you very much. Supported by. So let's see. Is that your name? What is your class? <laughs> Supported by Prince Afola Jesse, class of 2002. Uh, you are complete. Uh, now, uh, the floor is open for discussion, and I want people to please raise up your hands. Somebody will count and then give them. Uh, President, your President, Pozo, he was the first person to say he wants to ask a question. Number one. Yes, sir. Number two is. Uh, and yeah, the number three, Professor Ademirokun, number four, and number four, class president. Out of ten, eh? Aibe, class number five. Class president Aibe, and Oma Aibe, number five. Now, candidate the number six. Who again? What's your name? Amadi, number seven. Who again? What's the name? Who? Coco. Coco. Number Number nine, who is number nine? What about that side? I can't see you very well. You know, my eyesight, I don't have a telescope now. Nobody from there. Nobody. Okay, thank you very much. We have eight questions. No wish. Okay, I'm wish for this occasion. <laughs> now, um, PP and the please. Question. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for the opportunity. Let me start by thanking this executive and the, the predecessor in office. Because when I look at the financial report of the board, we are talking about millions, 100 million, 150 million. And I recall that in 2016, when the board started, we had nothing. Not only did we not have 
bring a thing. We were not even given the statutory uh, subvention from the presidents, at least those presidents that I sat So I want to thank you that the little that we were able to do, which was our 44 million dollars that we left behind, is now grown to something like 150 well, something million dollars. Thank you very much. God bless you. My first question, Mr. Chairman, is to the uh, it's on the Financial Secretary Report, page 33, item number four. I want to ask, what is the rationale for opening fixed deposit account at Stalin Bank? And what is the interest rate? The reason I'm asking this uh, question and the reason I thank the executive was when the board started, we, the, the only investment we made was through fixed deposit. Because at that time, the interest on fixed deposit was between 14 and 15 percent. But today, I think it's only about 2 percent. So I'm wondering why why we need, uh, why this was done? That's why I'm asking the question. Number two, do we really need a financial secretary at this point in time? Uh, I was thinking that we have a financial secretary, we have the treasurer. In those days, old days, financial secretary is the one who goes to tell us that we need to pay our money. But these days, we pay directly to the bank. It's just a thought that I think we should have a look at. Sir, now that we are talking a hundred million, what does the board want to do with this money? That's my next question. The Travelers Report why is it so difficult for us to change signatures? Because this administration took about six months or thereabout to have change of signatures. I had the same problem. So when I was leaving office, we tried so hard to ensure that the transition was smooth. Nevertheless, they had the same problem. And now it looks like it's getting worse. So please, what can we do to resolve this issue? Uh, page 37, item number 4, still on the Treasurer's Report. I would like, us, like him to educate us uh, on this new investment, whether it is complementary to the insurance scheme. Actually, when the welfare officer was uh, talking about it later, I rather think that it was complementary to the insurance scheme. But I think it is important to explain further so that we all understand what is going on and we are on the same page. My final question, Mr. Chairman, again is to the welfare officer. How many of those who benefited from the insurance scheme actually paid the 100,000 Naira levy? Because I observed that some of these people to whom uh, these checks are being given did not pay this 100,000 Naira initial deposit. But when I was leaving office, I left a handover note that said the issue should be reviewed. You remember the decision taken was that everybody was paying 100,000 naira over a period of three years. I didn't want to disrupt that. But the three years expired after I left office. And I asked that the review take place and only those who have paid those 100,000 naira should be retained. I wish my successor in office was here because he had a different idea. I think he wanted everybody insured. 
And some of those who have benefited from this deal are those under that uh, uh, that idea. One, if you insure everybody, is the institution that paid the premium. So I think, Mr. Madam Welfare Officer, there is a need to do a proper audit and see those who have benefited from this scheme who did not pay. But I'm sure there are those who benefited and did not pay. Now, and those who are sitting on the fence, who didn't think it would work, now they are asking questions. Are you not going to ask them to pay $100,000? My suggestion is that those who want to cover the scheme now should pay $200,000. Because the value of the dollar is And those who uh, have benefited, I don't know what we are going to do about those who benefited. Because the reason my successor in office dropped the idea is because although they were insured and this, the board paid for the premium, now they still didn't pay and that is why he jettisoned the idea. Uh, the, I think there is also a need for you to explain to us, I don't think many of our members really understand this insurance scheme. The transition, everybody pays. For example, if you are 60, it's 60 today, and you pay your 100,000 naira, you are okay. If you pass on before you are 75, you get 2 million naira. Right? But if you didn't pass on and you are 80, and over 80 like me, you don't get anything. Please. You don't get anything because you are considered uninsurable. That was why at the initial stage we started this investment such that from the process of the investment at least we'll be able to pay them something. And the idea is to grow the returns from the investment so that people over the age of 75 will also get to two million naira like the predecessor or like other people. So I think it's because I, as I go around, I find that people don't understand this issue at all. And I don't think those who are sitting on the fence, who didn't pay the initial 100,000 naira, should uh, now be told if you pay 100,000 naira, you can go on the scheme. I think those who didn't pay fully, for example, I think they should be informed and they have some things balanced to pay and if they do not pay, return their money to them and that ends because it's a voluntary exercise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll go in alphabetical order. Thank you. 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 Now, uh, page 37, Treasurer's Report. The last paragraph said, Total debit in the Zenit Bank account debit as at 14 is 44 million. So, so, so. Total credit 82. And he said, Total balance 55. I don't know whether. There's something that if you if you subtract debit credit. Is there another money that comes in? Total balance in the Zeni Bank. Okay. So then sir, uh past president uh, uh, uh the President, I hear I said, okay, part of what I wanted that if I contributed 100,000 at the initial, uh, at the start of the scheme, and I didn't die <laughs> until I'm 75, I will, I will, I, I mean, until 70, it was 70 then, 
75. And I didn't die and, and I died before 75. I will get 2 million. And I'm dying after 75, I will get 250. Why couldn't we I die before? <laughs> I'm already past 75. <laughs> Of, of money, then maybe 
the question of those who are waiting on defense can be lumped together to those people. I mean, those who are waiting on defense are now new people getting into the system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, Yes. Mr. Chairman and my colleagues, um, what I'm going to say briefly talk, touches on what your profile just uh, remarked. You have different opening balances from the Treasurer and from the Financial Secretary because of what all you said. But if you harmonize and take the common date, they will all be reporting the same. And then uh, the last one is on the Secretary's report. Again, I say very good job to all of you. But I see that the Secretary um, said those who were elected, and they went on to say, Chairman, the Secretary, the Vice. I think that was not the order in which the election was done. It was the President, the Chairman, the Vice, and the Secretary. That shows the hierarchy. My own thoughts. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, our mind is uh, not too much of a question, uh, just an appreciation of the expansion of the over the years. I remember that uh, the idea of this board of fellowship for was to strengthen the institution. So when the subsequent boards came in and they expanded it to this uh, welfare team, I remember in one of those meetings, I wasn't really impressed because I was starting to talk about how the institution will grow. But I'm pleased that what, has, what they are brought in is, is, is making the institution greater. But one thing I want to say that for this very meeting, I am really happy that the core value for which we thought that the Board, the board of Fellowship will exist was to promote the Nigerian institution of surveillance. And I found out in your address, that's what I'm really pleased. So if you go to your address in 210, page 20, where you are enumerated what you should do for the situation, I am pleased. I am pleased. And I want to congratulate you for that. Now I'm saying that it has taken us some years to get here. Please, the next time we meet, and we want a situation that we can categorically tell, tell ourselves that because the bond of fellow exists, Nigerian institutions of us have got this benefit. And there are so many things we can do. You must, I think you must set up a community to explore areas where we can come in. Like we said in that time, you find that it is only during the age year that we hear about Nigerian institutions of service. After the eight year we so what I thought, one of, one of the reasons that within this time, nobody says that the Board of Fellows must always have their meeting when AGM is being held. No! Board of Fellows, like this AGM you are talking about, they are not concerned with the AGM itself. It doesn't have to. Because when you do that, awareness is created at different forms. So you can imagine what we know, the, the situation will be if after an AGM. I'm sorry, the Board of Fellows have an AGM, which is the entire problem of NI. So there will be news of what we are doing. So I want the board to take note of that as I praise them and congratulate them for this thing. They should expand it. We let us not limit ourselves to a simple progressive forum where we are looking for benefit for ourselves. The idea of this benefit of the Board of Fellows is not to look for benefits for ourselves, but benefits for the whole decision. Thank you. The chairman, the, the past president, and the whole house. Uh, observing all the distinguished protocols. We thank God that the past president. Also, I mentioned the issue of the destination of this money pool. 
that's, that was the question I was about to raise. The destination of this money pool. Money pooling has become another trouble, hydra headed trouble for the profession for now. And that's why he tackled the situation very well. That not only that we should know how to spend that money, but we should plan for it. Uh, not only for the Board of Fellows, but for the institution itself. Before it reaches a stage where we don't start to think, be thinking about building. That we don't want to come here every year, hearing about figures that we have to target. What's the real destination of this money? And I think uh, your report is so, the reports of the the executive members have been so intriguing and uh, we are motivated and we still need to be more motivated than this, especially when we hear about uh, aspirations to, to give members the sense of belonging. When you watch, we, are, we have grown in number. Don't, don't forget that some people have lost interest, even in the profession totally. They're sitting back. Many people are not here today, not because they, don't, they can't fund it, but because they are, they are weird. So I pray that the executive members will infuse some sense into the NIS uh, executive members. Because things are dwindling, things are crashing, and I'm telling you the truth. Because of what? Money pooling. That we have to take care of. Finally, I want to talk about the leadership cropping. Leadership cropping. We have to start looking at the way our leaders emerge. Not from population and noise. Not from population and noise. We are not the, we are not, we don't belong to the uh, transport workers association thing. Well, anybody who just see money and pick it up and just lay, just uh, what we call uh, allowances, reckless allowances. So I think uh, it's my appeal that we should start looking at leadership cropping to affect the NIs, the body of the NIs entirely and make a change of paradigm. Because we are going to a precipice right now. And I have to stress that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Number seven. So we are Madi. The president. Past presidents. Stand on the admin protocol, sir. Fellow, distinguished fellows. The name is Joseph Amadi from Patakot or Rivers. Um, it is easier to criticize and much more difficult to appreciate. I personally, I really want to appreciate the executive of this board of fellows for what they've done. They've shown good leadership. And so, any other one should follow suit. Secondly, I want to say that the idea of insurance is not to make people die before 75. <laughs> if that is the idea, no person will want to insure his life. And so, for what we proposal they have on that page 44, please see how you can grow that so that those who have long paid their 100,000 will also benefit as others who didn't reach. 75. Thank you and God bless you. The last one, number eight. Sovio Coco, please. Chairman, sir, I wish to observe existing pro protocol. Thank you. And to inform you that um, the item I wanted to have on has been discussed. So I don't want to have to go for that. Uh, thank you all.
Thank you all for the um, questions being raised that have been raised. Um, the first one is from Sovio Bosuma in the PPNIS, and uh, the uh, founding chairman of the Board of Fellows. I think um, the what is it? Okay. Uh, the fixed deposit at Sterling. Why do we want to do that? Um, I think it's because the uh, fixed deposit in that place, I think I'm giving about 7%. I'm giving us 7.8%. Which is not 2%. Is it the. We don't want to. One basket. Watch. So we want to diversify. Put some money in stocks, in some in bonds, and some in and those that fixed deposit will yield us, we are sure it is the profit in stock is paper money. You can lose half of your money, one quarter. You are how far the bubble goes. So that's why. The financial secretary. Well, I think yes, that is, uh, we can think about it later, but for now, that is what our bylaws is. And um, the financial secretary is also doing his own part, ensuring that, um, yes, you will pay money straight into the but it keeps uh, the records of the account, whereas the treasurer keeps the money. It is the financial secretary that keeps the record, while the treasurer keeps the money. Yes, change in signatory. Um, it is rather <laughs> intriguing that this continued up to our own um, our tenure. But I want to assure you, it's going to be a, uh, a foregone uh, event. I mean, what I call it, a thing of the past. Because it is our intention, like we are giving you a report today. When we end in 2025, by the grace of God, uh, we will prepare our report. And after an ESCO has been elected, we will meet and give a handing over note, my to the next incoming chairman, secretary to the incoming secretary, and we have a meeting. That's how it should be. Because by the time we, we, we got into office, there was nobody around. So, it's a pity that it happened, but it will never happen again. Thank you very much. Yes, the fund that we have, we are not just collecting money, um, it's for our welfare, but we are trying to charge a way, in such a way that, uh, like the issue of um, those above 75, we pray that we all live long. So we all have a tendency to live long. So we will find a way of ensuring that we put some money uh, into uh, deposit and whatever interest we have we go into a benevolent fund. And as we accrue that money, if I see any chance people dying about the age of 75, they will have something, some shows to, to go to their family. Yes, the benevolent fund is exactly what I've just explained now. We will ensure that um, we build that up and ensure that members have the benefit of uh, being a member here. Now, I want to assure you that uh, all those who didn't pay are not beneficiaries. Uh, the uh, welfare officer went through all the necessary documents. And those who didn't pay, or who paid half and uh, were not insured, did not benefit from uh, whatever uh, insurance benefit they are supposed to have. 
I think that's all from uh, past president Daniel. Yes, the issue of financial year. Um, let me say that um, the financial year, in my own opinion, I don't think a president that didn't spend money should stand and explain the money spent a previous year. What we are having in NIS now that a previous year's account is being presented this year is wrong. We should have, like he said, we should have a financial year such a way that the executive, the president before he leaves office accounts for the money he spent plus or minus two months. That's, that is, I think, what, is, what should happen. Whereas, this year, we are going to be hearing about the money spent last year. It's wrong. What happens now the president goes between last between December uh, December last year to this place. No record, no account. It's the incoming president that is going to account for the for the money spent by the past president. So the a financial year should be such a way that plus or minus two months to the AGM. That's how it should be. Uh, I, I, I think uh, we should incorporate that also into the NIS. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And in our own case, and that's why we are giving, we are just 11 months in office, and we are giving accounts. It doesn't take more than one month if you keep good record for an auditor to prepare your account. Why must we wait a year to have an account? So we must have a change, a paradigm change, and ensure that... Um, when we now know our own, we can decide. If the board decides and say, well, our financial year should end um, maybe March or April, it's a decision. But it should, not, it should be plus or minus two months to the annual AGM. Thank you very much. I think we can decide that one at our next board meeting. I think that's all. Most other most other um, questions are just comments and um, hmm? okay leadership cropping. Yes, um, before we have thought about that, some of the issues raised by Sovia Dedeji have been thought of thought about, and that's why. We have two new committees incorporated into the bylaws. One, but we have expanded the uh, Evan GPC to include two people from the floor. So that it's not executive alone that decides how to appropriate the fund and so on and so forth. People elected on the floor should moderate. Then, research and um, development. Research and Development Committee is expected to handle issues that you are talking about, how the institution is to develop. And I in said, in fact, that has been the um, that has been the kernel of my address to you in the last in the in the engineering year, I mean this, this year so far. That leadership should be in such a way that uh, when you um, half we are must there must be some research and development if you can't do half a research and development there is no way we can have grow the institution and because of the caliber and the experience of fellows we should be able to generate ideas that we can um, um, uh, that we can use and ensure that we transfer to the institution for the develop for development and that's been always the what I've been telling, we have been addressing the institution all about. Then we have, in terms of how do we have um, proper uh, cropping of leadership, we have incorporated now into the uh, bylaws a situation whereby. You don't just raise up your hand and say, yes, I want to be this, I want to nominate somebody nominating. If you want to serve as chairman, you will fill a form. If you want to fill as deputy chairman, you fill a form, and there will be a committee that is called um, nomination 
and good governance committee that will review this thing and make sure that the person who wants to serve will, will, will be able to perform. We are asked in the past nomination, people raise up, I want to nominate somebody. Somebody who is not ready to serve will accept it because he has been nominated. So we want to, we want to stop that kind of uh, um, just coming to the coming to the meeting and somebody nominating and so on and so forth. We, um, if you agree with us, this will be implemented, and the research and development committee, I mean the research and development committee, will be able to ensure that we have the kind of interface with the government um, parastatals, and also, if possible, and it's going to be possible, we can have within the board of fellows some um, areas of development where the board of fellows, we have a think tank, discuss this issue, and have, have a way of following it up. And we want to also drive the areas whereby, for now, NIS has no development plan. Nothing. And we have been saying this, there must be minimum five to ten years development plan. What do we want to do? Not every president comes to office and says, oh, this is where I'm going. And I come, this is where I want to go. We cannot develop that way. The only way we can develop is to have a development plan agreed by all of us, not by only one president, agreed by all of us, and we pursue it to the letter. Thank you very much. Now we have the auditor's report. External auditor's report. <laughs> Sorry, we have kept, kept you waiting for a long time. Good afternoon, sir. I'm standing, uh, the chairman, sir. I want to stand on existing protocols, sir. Auditors report. I'm Arafi Alayande, representing Mutala Ajadi and Nko, Chartered Accountant. Report of the Report of the Auditor to the Member Board of Fellows, Nigeria Institution of Surveillance. For the period and my distinguished fellows, I'm sure you are getting tired, but please hold on a little bit more. In another 10 minutes, we will have a uh, lunch. Thank you. Please, please, please listen to the external auditor. Thank you. Report of the auditors to the members, board of fellows, Nigeria Institution of Surveillance for the period ended 31st May 2023. We have Audited the financial statements set out on page 9 to 12. Please, I'm on uh, page 52. I'm using your uh, your report. But this page that I'm quoting is on our own report. We have audited the financial statements set out on page 9 to 12 which have been prepared on the basis of the accounting policies on page 8. Respective responsibility of the board, executive and auditors. The board, executive are responsible for the preparation of the financial statements. It is our responsibility to form an independent opinion based on our audit. On both statements and to report our opinion to you basis of opinion. We have conducted our audit in accordance with the general accepted auditing standard. An audit includes examination on a third base of evidence relevant to the amount and disclosure in the financial statement made by the board in the preparation of the financial statement and of whether the accounting policies are appropriate to the board's circumstances consistently apply and adequately disclose. We plan and perform our audit so as to obtain all the information and explanation which we consider necessary to provide us with sufficient evidence to give reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatements, whether caused by fraud, other irregularities or error. 
Within our panel, we also evaluated the overall adequacy of the presentation of information in the financial statement. The financial statements are in agreement with the books of accounts which have been properly kept. And we have obtained all the information and explanation we require. Opinion. In our opinion, the financial statement gives a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the board and follow as at 31st May 2023. Page 53. Statement of a significant accounting policy. The following statement accounting policy adopted by the board and follow in the preparation of the financial statement. One, this is a derivation. Financial statements are prepared under historical cost convention using cash flow of accounting. Two, income. The board is financed by actual cash realized from members' fellows' pledges, welfare fund, medal loan, information, uh, investment income, and other sources. Page 54. Statement of financial position as of 31st May 2023. We have the investment. We quote notes. We have the notes to the account, but we are just quoting the number on the on the note. Investment on 2000 May as of 31st May 2023. The investment total to one million one hundred and ninety-seven million. One hundred and seventy-nine million three hundred and ninety-nine thousand nine hundred and eighty million. We have current assets. Bank balance. We have fifty-five million two hundred and twenty-three thousand four hundred and twenty-four million. Total assets. Two hundred and thirty-four million. Six hundred and twenty-three thousand four hundred and fourteen million equity and liabilities. Under equity and liability, we have accrued expenses, which is not three five hundred thousand. We have the excess of income over expenditure. We have two hundred and thirty-four million one hundred and twenty-three thousand four hundred and fourteen million. Total equity and liability: two hundred and thirty-four million six hundred and twenty-three thousand four hundred and fourteen million. And for twenty twenty twenty-three details. On page fifty-five, we have the income and expenditure. Under it, we have income. On at, uh, as at uh, 31st May 2023, we have total income to be 78,110,984 million. We have expenses, expenditures, 17,351,155 million. Committee allowances, 14,926,000. Bank charges, we have one oh six million, one oh six thousand, one hundred and three million. Printing and stationaries, we have three million, one hundred thousand. Audit and accountancy fees, five hundred thousand. Debt, debt benefit, five hundred thousand. Pension, no. Hotel expenses, one million, ninety one thousand one hundred. Total expenditure is thirty seven million five hundred and fifty seven thousand one hundred and fifty eight million. Excess to deficit of income over expenditure, total to the fourteen million five hundred and thirty five thousand. 828 million. Excess of income over expenditure brought forward 194 million 87,588 million. 
excess of income over expenditure total two hundred and thirty four million six hundred and twenty three thousand four hundred and fourteen million page fifty six summary of the receipt and payments as of thirty first May twenty twenty three open balance is seventeen million five hundred and twenty twenty three thousand nine hundred and sixty eight million and uh total receipts from as of uh May thirty uh uh thirty first May twenty twenty three I mean the total receipt to receive for the year thirty two million one hundred and sixty five thousand nine hundred and eighty four million total ninety nine million six hundred and eighty nine thousand nine hundred and fifty two million total payments four hundred and four forty four million four hundred and sixty six thousand five hundred and eighteen million balance as per bank statement fifty five million two hundred and twenty three thousand four hundred and twenty four million page fifty five and fifty seven so note to the accounts as a thirty fourth May twenty twenty three Note one investment balance brought forward is one hundred and seventy seven million two hundred and ninety nine thousand nine eighty. Addition in the year six million one hundred thousand. Withdrawal four million total one hundred and seventy nine million three hundred and ninety nine thousand. Nine hundred and eighty million. No two bank balance limit fifty five million two hundred and twenty three thousand four hundred and thirty four thousand. No three accrual expenses audit and accountancy five hundred thousand. No four income under the income there are pledges. And donation amounted to forty three million nine hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety six naira. Investment income thirteen million four hundred and twenty eight thousand three hundred and twenty naira. Follows from processing fourteen million four hundred thousand. Dinners to long term. Six million two hundred and eighty two thousand six hundred and six hundred and sixty eight naira total seventy eight million one hundred and ten thousand nine eighty four naira. I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and the all our members. Thank you, uh, external auditor, for this um, presentation. Uh, the floor is now open for questions and if any. Number one. Yes, name? Okokonesian. Number one, okay. Number one. Number two. Yes, Okoko okay, Ezen number two. <laughs> number three, Ezen. Okay. Number four, Okoko. <laughs> Who? Yeah. Okay, that was number two. Okay, let me that way. Number one. Number, okay, number three. Number one, please. Our time is far spent, so I go straight to my question. All protocols observed. My name is Okokon Esien. 
Philo 165, class of 2006.